Welcome to Real Estate Coaching Radio, starring award-winning real estate coaches and number one international best-selling authors, Tim and Julie Harris. This is the number one daily radio show for realtors looking for a no BS, authentic, real-time coaching experience. What's really working in today's market, how to generate more leads, make more money, and have more time for what you love in your life. And now your hosts, Tim and Julie Harris. We are back. And today is day two of the 15 new success rules for this market. And again, this is day two. If you have not listened to the show we did yesterday, it's easy enough for you to do so. You can just uh, obviously over on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, YouTube, our main website, Tim and Julie Harris. Um, Now, reminder, if you want the full show notes, and Julie and I do write out exhaustive notes for every single podcast we do. So every podcast you listen to that takes a half hour to listen to, half hour for us to record, it takes an equal amount of time, if not more so, to actually come up with the notes, sometimes like a couple hours per podcast. We always do a very in-depth, you know, very detailed job with the notes because we know a lot of you guys use the notes for your own education, for referring back to, but also for your own social media, uh, for training and coaching um, your teams and your brokerages. All of our notes are available at harrisrealestatedaily.com, harrisrealestatedaily.com. You can join the newsletter for free. Just go to harrisrealestatedaily.com or down below in the description of today's podcast, you'll find a link. You can just join harrisrealestatedaily.com. For those of you who've joined and you're not getting the newsletter, it's because the newsletter requires that you double opt in. And unfortunately, some of the emails that you have to click on to double opt in are being sent to spam or your junk folder. So if you're not receiving the uh, newsletter and you have opted in, please just go to your email, whatever it's, you know, Google or, you know, Gmail or Outlook, whatever you're using, and just search by our last name, Harris, and you'll find the email. Click on it, you're double opt in, you'll get the newsletter right away. And that is, again, where you'll find all of our long form notes, in addition to a bunch of other content that we're just going to be producing exclusively for the newsletter. Now, before we get to our next point, which is point number nine, I'm going to share with you something that Julie and I were just talking about, a podcast that we're working on, which is, you know, pertains, frankly, to the new rules with regards to buyer agent commission, all the ways that you're going to be able to have the buyer's agent's commission paid for, or rather the buyer is, um, in addition to the seller just paying for it traditionally, as they always have. And Julie, so some of the things that we're putting together that we're researching before we share with all these guys are? Well, certainly the go-to is going to be to ask for a seller's concession, but that opens up a can of worms, right? So can you do that with FHA? Can you do it with VA? Can you go over the list price? And if so, by what percentage? And how does that affect an appraisal? So that opens up a lot of different things that I've been researching, and that's why it's taken a few days to make sure we get all the facts straight. And I, we're, yeah. and also the traditional way, obviously, the seller may have just factored it into their list price that they're going to pay the uh, the whole commission, uh, you know, basically pay the buyer's agent's commissions. And Julie was just alluding to this. We do suspect that Fannie Mae, in addition to the FHA VA, is going to soon make it so that you can roll the buyer's agent's commissions into the deal. Well, moral of the story is we're going to come up with a bunch of different paths for you to follow to get your buyer agent's commission. Uh, covered. This is all part of our new updated buyer presentation that is included in Premier Coaching. The buyer presentation, of course, is the actual presentation you give to actual buyers when you're presenting to them why they should be working with you exclusively. Because remember, you're going to have to have exclusive con- uh, buyer agency contract signed. Um, and that you're going to have to prove to them or explain to the buyer why they'd want to work exclusively with you. So these are the types of thoughts you want to keep in mind, um, you know, and definitely take action now. Get your buyer presentation together. Understand the complexity that's going to be entering in the market. And a lot of you know, agents, if they are not ahead of the curve, learning these things before, say, mid-year this year, they're going to be suffering because the new rules, as we understand them, are going to mandate that agents have their exclusive buyer agency contract signed. It's no longer optional. Uh, a lot of you understand the agency form. You have to have that signed. That's required in all 50 states. Uh, some of you go as far as having buyer net sheets signed. That's really great. Best practices. But now every single one of you are going to have to have exclusive buyer agency contracts signed as well. So we're going to be giving you all kinds of updated information on that. It's all going to be included in Premier Coaching. We're going to uh, essentially show you an overview on an upcoming podcast. But Julie, today is about 15 new success rules for this market. And let's jump right back in at point number nine. Point number nine. This is part two. All right. So keep your online profiles professional. Don't be political, opinionated, or complain. Don't have unfinished profiles. Have a professional business Facebook page. Don't get talked into paying for website optimization. 
Your social media is there to support your business, not to create business. It's not a spoke. We talked about spokes yesterday. It is not a lead generation spoke by itself. Now, why is this a success rule? Because if you screw this up, it will cost you business. You might not get the appointment in the first place. You might have an appointment canceled on you. You might just not look like somebody they want to transact with. I'm going to share something with you guys about social media. It wasn't Julie's overarching points, but it was a, re- a valid point. When you see somebody who has a big follower, uh, you know, big a lot of views, a lot of the other things, chances are they're promoting their social media. And by promoting, I mean... They're basically running ads for it. So the social media platforms obviously want you spending money to promote your channel. And so don't be jealous of somebody that has 16 billion followers on Instagram. Chances are they're paying to promote to actually have followers, you know, not just follow them, but also like and, you know, comment on their posts. The same goes with YouTube. The one platform that you cannot game, and that's a nice way of saying it, uh, is podcasting. You cannot fake downloads. You cannot fake listens. You cannot fake whether you're getting results or not. And maybe, you know, some of you won't like the word fake, but it is true. You know, one of our uh, partners at eXp Royalty um, went to a event hosted by arguably one of the biggest business influencers in social media. Mm-hmm. And I won't mention his name. Okay. Uh, David Patrick something or another. Okay. I, that, that's who it was. That's oh, the, the guy's name. Gotcha. Some of you guys will know who he is. Mm-hmm. Well, he told our uh, EXP partner straight up that there is zero chance he would have ever built any kind of following on social if he was just hoping to do it off organic. Mm-hmm. That he had to spend gobs and gobs and gobs and gobs, millions and millions of dollars yeah. to have any kind of presence on social. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's something that you guys have to really be opening your eyes to. The reason some agent in your marketplace might have a big you know, social media profile is because they're send, spending every last cent hoping that their social media online fame will result in them being rich. But the reality of it is, and some people are realizing this, that if you have to choose between being rich and being famous, you can't choose both. You're going to want to make that choice as soon as you can before you decide to start buying business. Um, and that's, you know, because truthfully, you can't easily be famous anymore, but that doesn't mean you're going to be rich because you're going to spend all your money trying to be famous. You can be rich and not be famous, which as you get older, you'll realize is the optimal way to exist. Being financially free and having your autonomy is the secret sauce to happiness. And uh, just, you know, that got me all these little ideas off Julie's first point, <laughs> okay. which was uh, keep your online profiles consistent. Point number 10. Yes. All right. Point number 10. And this is such a simple thing, but I've had so many coaching clients tell me over the years that this was life changing to their business. For sure. Oh my gosh. Number 10, answer your phone. Call people back as soon as possible, even if that's to tell them you're about to be on an appointment and you'll call them at a certain time. But better than that is answer your phone in the first place. Lack of communication is the number one complaint real estate clients and prospects have. When they don't hear from you, they're not thinking good things. And when I was reading this, I was thinking about Sue and Rachel Romans up in um, Wisconsin. I will never forget, this happened this year. I think it was Rachel that told me that they got a call, uh, I think it was a sign call from one of the neighbors that noticed that they had sold a listing in their neighborhood. Neighbor calls and says, I'm getting ready to sell my house. Will you come over and talk to me? Like, you know, the call that every listing agent wants to get. And of course, Rachel answered the phone, immediately sets the appointment. By the time the other two realtors that that person called back even got back with them, Sue and Rachel had already gone on the appointment, already gotten the signatures, and already are getting the pictures done. It took three or four days for those other agents to bother calling back. If someone texts you, you call them back. If someone emails you, you call them back. If someone messages you on Instagram, you call them back. The call is always going to be far more powerful than what everyone else does. And the things that digital communication does, everyone knows this, is when someone texts you or whatever, you do, it, there's sort of an implied understanding that you're not going to necessarily have to get back with them right away. Yeah. So that's going to give you a lot of opportunity to, you know, essentially fall in status in the idea, in the, uh, the uh, mind of that uh, potential seller in that example. So you want to always call people back and then tell them, listen, I always call people back no matter how they message me. Uh, because frankly, that's the best way for me to be of service to my real estate clients, especially my sellers. That in itself will get you the listing in a world where everyone mm-hmm. else is uh, essentially normalized being complacent and frankly, lazy. Yeah, it's so true. And you know, by not answering your phone, you're also counting on them leaving a message, with they, which they might not even do. It could be a completely lost opportunity. All right, point number 11, create and use your proven pre-listing package and learn how to present your unique sales propositions. Those are called USPs. 
Your pre-listing package is your silent salesperson. Send it prior to your listing presentation and it will handle the objections before you even arrive. Zig Ziglar said success is where opportunity meets preparation. If you're going on listings without having prepared, without having prepared the potential seller for the presentation, then you are potentially going to lose. When Julie and I created the pre-listing pack, let's call it version 1.0, and now we're on like version 300.5, <laughs> right? But the pre-listing yeah. pack originally was made because Julie and I were going, I know this sounds like a nice problem to have, but too many listing appointments and we were getting burned out especially because we had a big service area. So if you're sitting on in a car for a half hour, 45 minutes in between listing appointments, you can't go on too many of those and maintain a high level of energy and enthusiasm. Um, and then the seller runs late or something happens, right? It's just a big pain in the ass. Mm -hmm. So over time, what we had to do is hire someone to go on listing appointments for us. Obviously very hard to find someone that had our skill set, let alone our experience, not to mention the fact name recognition, because a lot of the folks that were calling us to list their houses were past clients, centers of influence types. And this is after we've been in the business for like five years. So we hired somebody, but we didn't just rely on their skill set or their evolving skill set. We created this pre-listing pack and that was version 1.0. And we called it the silent salesperson. So the pre-listing pack would go out prior to the listing appointment. And oftentimes by before Lisa actually got there, that was her name, they had have already decided to list the house with, you know, the Harris family team. And that is what happened consistently. Did she ever get as effective at listing property as Julie and I did? No, but was she close? Yeah, she was really close. Mm -hmm. Julie and I would list nine out of 10, let's say, and she would list seven out of 10. But that's pretty impressive, you have to admit. Mm -hmm. That's what the pre-listing pack is. If you don't have our pre-listing pack that's customized for you, you're missing the opportunity to essentially win more listings. If you're a brand new listing, you wanna know how you're gonna compete against the old grizzled veteran in your marketplace. They might not be old, but the grizzled veteran <laughs> in your marketplace. Sure. Well, guess what, it's your pre-listing pack. So that is included in Premier Coaching. Go to premiercoaching.com, premiercoaching.com, or click below in the link, uh, in the, the link in the show description below to join Premier Coaching, first 30 days is free. Point number 12. Point number 12, focus on being a listing agent. Listings produce leads, but buyers generally don't. Sellers have to sell, but buyers never have to buy. Working with buyers is physical labor. Working with listings is mental labor. It requires skill. Now, most agents only list the easy repeat and referral business, and that's okay as a new agent, but learn to win in a competitive listing situation so you can list homes with people who don't already know you. You'll be successful at a much higher level and much more quickly when you learn to be a listing agent. Lots more on that in Premier Coaching. Yep, that's really, if you wanna know what, it, what we're all about and Premier Coaching is all about, I would say teaching you guys how to be powerful listing agents is number one. Yes, and systematizing the buyer side, yes. Yeah, well, but, but becoming a listing agent, that's the number first one. step to being financially free. 100%. Yep. All right, number 13, always say, yes, it would be my pleasure to help you with that, no matter what that is. Then get help if you need it. You can only build your skills by earning while you learn, so don't say no to opportunities when you can say yes. If something's just too far out of your wheelhouse, you can always partner with or refer the transaction to another agent. You'll be much more versatile and profitable when you say yes more than you say no. There's a story that Julie and I usually tell when we're sharing this point about listing, getting a call from someone that had like a double wide or something <laughs> equivalent to a double wide. Mm -hmm. And it the you know, it was one of these basically if you were only listing it for three percent, you'd make no money kind of deals. It was like nothing. Five dollars. Exactly. Yeah. But it was actually a referral from somebody else and they knew this person from church or something like this. So you know, we would have taken the listing anyway, but we took the listing. So we took the listing. It turns out this gal who owned this property, it was on Roslyn, mm -hmm. actually. I remember. She was the personal assistant for a guy who was uh, running Mettler Toledo, which was a big company in Columbus, Ohio, where we sold real estate. And that Mettler Toledo guy not only did a transaction with us himself, but actually she was the assistant for the incoming new Mettler Toledo CEO mm -hmm. who ended up buying one of our listings for 850 grand. Right. And then he referred probably another, I bet you over the next two or three years, 10 transactions to us. Yes. It Directly. Was amazing. He did. Yeah. From that, you know, nothing listing. Which we would have had none of had we blown off her call just because she was a, a cheap, you know, kind of boring listing. Right. Exactly. And that goes in, look, listing land uh, is not necessarily, you know, that sometimes can be an act of futility. 
But in, when you're really wanting to build your business, you list everything because you don't know the opportunities that will come from it. You're going to list land and all of a sudden you're going to get a call from a guy that wants to, a builder that, you know, specs on six houses a year, you know, build six specs homes per year. And now you got not just one listing, but you have six. You guys get it? So say yes to everything. Stop being so damn particular. I only list things that are in this price range or in this geographic area. Yeah. In a market like this, you list everything, especially um, you know, frankly, in a transitioning market, because the market you're in might not be the market you want to be in in three to five years. Things well, are going to change really, really quick. That's right. And I have to give a shout out on this topic to Chris Leon in Chicago, part of our EXP family, because Chris kept on coming across all these like mixed use commercial property opportunities, which didn't used to be in his wheelhouse. So what did he do? He said, yes, it'd be my pleasure to help you with that. He found a successful commercial agent that would help him and co-list on the first three or four like that that he did learned the ropes, and now he's very confident to do those commercial and mixed-use deals by himself because he said, yes, it'd be my pleasure to help you with that. Okay, point number 14. Do you do what you don't want to do when you don't want to do it at the highest level? There will be days when you simply don't feel motivated. There will be days when you overthink yourself and fall into analysis paralysis. There will be days when you feel less than competent, but do the work anyway so you then can have days of success, gratitude, and profitability. Be able to say, thank you, past Tim, for doing the work that I, so I can enjoy the rewards today. Fill in your name, obviously. Most, most <laughs> days you don't get a, any kind of sense of, you get a sense of, no, you get a sense of accomplishment, yeah. but you don't have any meaningful wins. And here's something I wish I would have learned. We're both of us, I wish we would have both learned this when we were younger, is that in life you have virtually no true home runs, let mm -hmm. alone grand slams. Yeah. Most of the successes are going to come after uh, uh, the accumulation effect. In other words, showing up to the ball field in the first place, mm -hmm. even if you didn't get another dugout, at least you showed on, at least you laced up your shoes. More than once. And if you get on first base occasionally, that's mm -hmm. great. And obviously you get three players on three bases. You're going to hit, uh, you know, you're going to score a point. You guys get it. So in life, stop looking for the grand slam. Stop, stop looking for the big idea. Stop looking for the Willy Wonka golden ticket and the winning lottery number. Stop, look, stop looking for the one thing that's going to solve all your financial problems, or the big closings that's going to cause you to be able to, whatever it is. Stop thinking like that. It's the accumulation effect of from having done long term, <laughs> again, sometimes long term is 10, 20, even 30 years of doing what you don't want to do when you don't want to do it at the highest level. Like for example, the compounding effect of money. We've done a podcast on that. If and Julie and I are probably going to do this for Zoe, we're going to take a certain, she's 10. So we're going to take a certain amount of money and we're going to put it into a retirement account for a 10 year old. Sounds insane, doesn't it? But she's going to have the benefit. Let's say she retires when she's 70. She's going to have the benefit of compounding over effectively compounding interest, yeah. it, compounding interest. So if we put in, you know, say only $10,000, and it doubles six times. So 10,000 becomes 20, 20 becomes 40, 40 becomes 80, 80 becomes 160, 160 becomes 320, 320 becomes 640. And that's if we only put it on uh, 10 grand once. You guys get it? So the compounding effect for money is obvious, but the compounding, and by the way, we are doing it every 10 years, but it could compound every seven years. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look at the compounding effect of doing what you don't want to do and you don't want to do it at the highest level in business and in life, and working out every day. You don't work out every day and feel fantastic afterwards, but the accumulation effect of staying in good shape and your body staying in a youthful condition as you get older, that's going to be something you're going to be very grateful to the, you know, you of 10 years ago for having actually done. Uh, Julie and I did a longevity test um, for an insurance thing the other day. And it was funny the questions they asked. Have you ever smoked? No. How many, uh, how much alcohol do you have every day? And then one of the other questions was, do you exercise every day? For how long? What type of exercise? Mm -hmm. And then do you have vegetables five days of the week? I know. Did you remember that question? I did, yeah. Well, we do, but we have uh, we have super greens uh, every day. In our smoothie. Yeah, in our smoothie. Yeah. And Which, believe me when I tell you, is not my favorite. Yuck, but I do it anyway. And so what's the output of that? Uh, I'm supposed to live till I'm 100 and Julie's supposed to live till she's 99. Okay. That's a cumulative effect. And these insurance guys, I'm sure, study the heck out of that. Yeah, they do. So, yes, do what you don't want to do when you don't want to do it at the highest level so that you then one day sooner when you do that more can do what you do want to do when you want to do it with those who you want to do it with. And I hope by the time you and I are 99 and 100, <laughs> we have AI doing this podcast for us. I hope it happens. I hope before that. But I hope yes. before that too, yeah. Okay, so number 15, get involved in Premier Coaching so we can move you forward faster, answer your questions daily, and hold you accountable. Scripts, skills, pre-listing package, listing presentation, buyer presentation, which suddenly is oh so much more important, 
And many more things will help you build confidence, earn money immediately, and shorten your learning curve. You know, it's funny I just said that. But, you know, um, so you and I have been married for 33 years this year. We did our first real estate deal when we were 22 and 23. And everybody, I, great coaching clients, people have always asked me, they usually ask me this during the beginning of the year, do you think real estate and real estate agents are going to be relevant in the future? And I always tell them what I actually think, which is hell yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, because there's all kinds of psychological reasons why people will always want a trusted friend or advisor. Mm -hmm. But there's so many funny, really crappy articles, funny and crappy usually go together, mm -hmm. um, coming out about how AI is going to re replace realtors. Yeah, how yeah, all of a yeah. sudden this innate need that people have to seek the advice of a trusted friend or counselor or whatever uh, during a very stressful event, which is buying and selling real estate, will just be dissipated because someone, someone's creating a chat bot yeah. Let's answer all their questions. As if. It's just so ridiculous, isn't it? Yeah, it, it really, really is. When you think about all of the intricacies of an actual transaction, there's like, people wouldn't make it 10 minutes. But even the intricacies, right? Even the analytical, technical parts of it, that's not really where the real work is. The real work is in the psychological like aspect. Getting you emotionally to the finish line. Exactly. That's where the actual stress comes in. Um, and, but here's what is true, is the AI is going to make it so that you will focus all of your energies on the high yield activities, which are the direct contacts with prospects, sellers ideally, and working with them at a high level emotionally. So all the other things in your business, you're gonna be able to delegate to AI, and I'm guessing that's gonna happen this year. Uh, we're gonna be doing a lot of podcasts and a lot of content about really what I think will be the emergence of the AI, um, I think, empowered super agent. That's a great mm -hmm. combination of words. I might use that as a title. But really where we're going to see that the first is everybody and their brother is going to become a social media influencer. Trust me when I tell you that. Everybody and their brother who wants to, obviously, is going to become a social media influencer. You're going to be able to hire or you know, create for you. Someone's going to be able to create all this for you. Uh, you know, you're going to be able to turn out constant video content, constant real written, written long form you know, blog posts. All of this is going to be coming from AI. And you're going to be able to essentially just put all that stuff in autopilot. So I, I like to mention this because I, it resonates with a lot of people because they feel like they're irrelevant in real estate because they're not able to churn out social media content. They don't feel comfortable in a camera, in front of a camera. They don't feel comfortable, you know, doing this sort of stylized, fake, dramatic version of themselves. They don't want to dance around on TikTok. Well, the all, average agent's what, 61, right? They can't dance around on TikTok. Is that your point? You're no, an well, agent. I'm, I'm just saying, <laughs> you know, I mean, it's normal to feel that way. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I'm sure as hell not going to be dancing around on TikTok. Nor am I. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, moral of the story, well, Zoe will, do it for, Zoe will do it for both of us. Exactly. Yeah, but you'll have your avatar that will do all that stuff for you. And so there's, we're going to see so many different ways of uh, leveraging all the technology and the AI, voice, video, everything, that really what's going to differentiate you from the other agent. What's going to truly make you special different? It's your ability to converse. It's the ability to communicate. It's the ability for you to actually solve other people's problems at a high level. It's an ability for you to um, essentially be the true, the best version of yourself as a real estate professional. When we talk to agents nowadays, the ones that are struggling the most, it's because you're focusing all your energies on the things that are going to get you the least results. All the speculative stuff mm -hmm. that has become normalized. This is the beauty of the AI. It's all going to be able to be delegated to the AI so you can go back and focus on the high yield activities, the proactive lead generation, the pre-qualifying, the presenting, uh, the negotiating, the closing, and of course, the proactive lead follow-up, though some of those things I think AI is going to do a great job at for you too. To well, answer. just one of our previous points, answer the phone. Be right. there when somebody needs their question answered. So do I think there should be more realtors or the same number of realtors or fewer realtors? That's another question we had. Mm -hmm. Somebody interviewed us lately. I actually think there's going to be more realtors. I have a theory about this. Okay. Okay. Here's my theory. If you look at the percent of, of Americans that have active real estate licenses as a percent of total Americans, right? Less than 350 okay. million Americans. I think it's like 300, I don't, somewhere in there, right? Yeah. I bet you that percent mm -hmm. grows proportionately. Of, in other words, I bet you the percent of people that have real estate licenses, mm -hmm. which is let's call it two and a half million people, members right. of NAR, not members of NAR, okay. grows proportionately with the total population in the United States. Because I bet you what happens is as more people uh, are you know, essentially in the United States, more people become, everyone's always going to want to buy or sell real estate. That's never going to change. 
uh, and as more of those people enter the age range where they buy and sell real estate, there'll be a, a need for more real estate pro uh, professionals. Makes sense. I, I think it's all about demographics. Mm -hmm. So it's an interesting theory I have. No, I, it makes sense to me. I should go back and research to see like what the total, see if that percent's uh, uh, consistent. Mm -hmm. And I, it, here, here's another thing I think is funny too. People said during hard times, there'll be fewer real estate agents. The exact opposite is true. Julie and I talked about this so many times uh, going back five years from now. Well, think about COVID. Everybody got licensed. Exactly. And guess what? Everyone got licensed during 07, 08, 09 because the market started to turn around in 09. When people are, are feeling financially under pressure, they actually get licenses to supplement their other sources of income. Duh. And yet people are yeah. saying during hard times, people don't get real estate licenses. It's Why? easier to get licensed than to go get a new job. It, totally. <laughs> exactly. Anyway. Yeah. So guys, listen, thank you for keeping this number one list to daily podcast for real estate professionals in at least the United States. Hopefully, and I know you are because you give us feedback and five-star reviews over on iTunes, um, you are benefiting from this podcast. And by the way, if you've not yet given us a five-star review on iTunes and commented why you like this podcast, why you listen to it, some of you listen to us every single day, please do so over on iTunes. It means a lot to us. Julie and I read those every single time. Uh, we really love the feedback. If you've not purchased our book over on Amazon, I think we have 800 five-star reviews or something. Um, so it's, the book's called Harris Rules. That's another great um, gateway to learn more about Julie and I's philosophy about success in real estate and in life. It's Harris Rules. Uh, but in the meantime, guys, thank you for keeping this number one listen to daily podcast for real estate professionals in at least the United States. Have a fantastic day. We'll talk with you on the show tomorrow. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com.